Hello, knockouts. Tanya TKO here. Give me one second. Let me just, I'm going to do my intro over. I just need to get the name of the young lady who recommended this thing to me. All right, God Sunflower. All right. Hello, knockouts. Tanya TKO here. And a special shout out to God Sunflower who sent this video to me. As a warning, this video does contain some sensitive language, which may be triggering for some people. We're gonna play a clip from this black Israelite who is teaching men how to keep a black woman or put a black woman in her place. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into this. Good morning, everybody. This is live. You are on the Tanya TKO live channel. So this is a channel that we record our live videos on. This part is going to be edited out because we record the live videos here and then they're edited and put up on Tanya TKO TV. So you have no fear, have no fear. If you see some stuff that is, all right, there we go. <sighs> this dude, Alicia's finally catching a live. Yes, baby, gotta keep those notifications on. All right. So let's, let's jump right into it. Now, what do you do? You're married to her. You can't divorce her. You can't beat her. You can't kill her. What do you do? You call her a bitch. And brother, you do it. You do it until, you know, do it until it strikes home. Do it until, do it with every sentence. Do it like as an exclamation point. Do it, shut up, bitch. This bitch, something that bitch. Do it like it's her name. Do it. Do it. Just keep saying it. Keep doing it until she just cannot take it anymore. Give her something to feel, bitch. Let your kids hear it. And your kids come in the room and say, son, I'm saying this to your mother. You remember this. You remember this. Never let a woman take away your courage, take away your honor. Never do it. You do this when you grow up. If you have the, if you have the misfortune to marry a woman that says things like your mother says to me. You let your sons hear it. Let your daughters hear what they should. Now, what do you do? All right. So that's a video right there. Let me give my intros. I'm Tanya TKO. I'm a self-love specialist from tanyatko.com. I hope you learn how to love yourselves and one another. On this channel, we use viral video topics as teachable moments in our own lives. I am a certified life coach with a specialty in relationship coaching. Hmm. Recently, I've come to the conclusion that the black man is a conquered male. And so I feel untethered. And, and, and you know what, listen, I did a broadcast the other day, all of this came about when it all started in processions with the, the Kevin Kittenheel Samuels video, where he came out calling that woman abroad, hollering at her, cursing at her and hanging up on her, right? Then I had a person who is an alleged protector of women whose idea of protection is to blame women for everything that is relationship uh, involved and not hold men culpable or accountable and not counsel or teach men, but to come and spread his idea, his unqualified, unvetted, uneducated, unresearched non-reading statistics based on feelings, not facts, opinions onto women, right? And it was in the middle of that broadcast that I just, I had an epiphany. I said, these men are conquered. These men are conquered. And everything that comes out, comes out through the conquered filter. Look at, take a look at this man. I just want you to look at him. Look at him. I don't know what that is. Is that hair on his head? Hold on, let's take a look. Or is that some sort of rap, do rag, or something? I don't know. But as you see, this man is morbidly obese. 
He has breasticles hanging down. He's in some jean shirt. All of these accoutrements around him, making it look like he knows what it is that he's talking about because he got some stuff from Egypt or wherever the hell it is that he's claiming, or Israel or wherever, because he's supposedly a black Israelite. And I have decided that I am not, I'm not going to sit around anymore acting stunned and surprised. I am a warrior. And I am, I feel that it is my duty to help you all prepare for what is out there. And instead of just sitting back and fanning ourselves and acting like somebody from Gone with the Wind and oh, you got pulled down the curtains and no, mm -mm. realize what it is. We are dealing with a conquered male. You yourself were raised under a conquered patriarchy, underneath a toxic Caucasoid patriarchy. So you have a lot that is that is impounding upon you. And so there are things that you're going to need to do to, to, to strengthen yourself up, to heal yourself, to get rid of some of the toxicities that exist inside of your life, some of the patterns and habits, and you're going to have to prepare yourself for what is right now because there are a lot of us out there who are sitting in a fantasy land hoping that some man is going to swing down on a vine screaming oh and scoop you up and everything is going to be happily ever after as soon as you push out some fat little cherub babies from your crotch and that's not how it goes down unfortunately some of the people who were sent here to protect us are actually here to harm us. We have to realize that when you're dealing with a conquered male, that there are a lot of things that are coming through his perspective that is coming from a conquered perspective. So in this man's point of view, he's talking about calling a person a female dog, calling a woman a female dog, his wife. Not only that, in his lack of wisdom, he feels that it's a good idea to let his sons hear it, to let his daughters hear it, so that they can hear a conquered male talking down to a disempowered woman. And I'm here, listen, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be different on this channel. I'm here to let you know, okay, now that we know that we are dealing with a conquered male, now what? What is it that you do? Ladies, we are going to have to choose better. We are going to have to get better ourselves. We're going to have to heal our traumas. We're going to have to shine and buff ourselves up, not just from the outside. There are a lot of people who ask, oh, Tanya, why did you close TKO Skin? My skin company was doing very well. I made a lot of money doing TKO Skin, but I also had a lot of women that, that were falling in the gap that we're thinking that if you put some creams on the outside, that if you that if you heal up these external scars, that everything is going to be all right. And I knew that there was a need for me to write a book. I knew that there was a need for me to come forward and make more videos, to do courses, classes. And now I feel that there's a need for me to do retreats, for us to get out into the wilderness and unleash our inner wild woman and do some healing, some goddess warrior woman healing of our own. So now that we know that we're dealing with a conquered male, now what? How much longer do we sit up here lowering ourselves, looking up to people who cannot lead us where it is that we need to go? And hoping that we can contort a person who is not equipped not equipped. I remember when I was making yogurt, I used to make homemade yogurt years ago, back when I used to drink cow milk, right? And you cannot use homogenized milk to make yogurt because it just does not have the natural bacteria inside of it. it it's been homogenized. So no matter what it is that you do, no matter how many cultures you get, no matter how many rennets you get, it does not matter. You cannot turn homogenized milk into yogurt. You can't because the bacteria has been killed off. The building blocks, the foundation of that which you need to propagate inside of it is not there. So how much longer do we continue to try to force people 
persons into a role that they are not equipped, fundamentally do not have the building blocks for. Now, am I saying that every man out there does? No, if that were the case, then we just need to go on to the, to the island of Lesbos and try to get that, um, that, that, that the uterus to start procreating children on its own, like they said that women can do. <laughs> no. What it is that I need you to do is to understand that some milks are homogenized, some are raw. You know what I'm saying? Some have the building blocks in there. It's up to you to be able to navigate quickly, to be like, oh, I know what this is, turn away and spend your time. Because listen, I'll tell you this, right? I used to read tarot on a on, on, on the largest psychic networks in the United States. And I read tarot back to back to back. And some of you who catch me on a good day on Facebook when the spirit hits me to come out and read tarot publicly, I, I, I read it for you all on Facebook. When I was reading tarot on this on this 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 call line, this call center, this this website, woman after woman after woman after woman would call in, seeing the red flags seeing the early warning signs of potential problems, seeing the mismatch and falling into the, into the societal pressures of why can't you keep a man or don't, don't, be, don't, don't, don't abandon him, be a ride or die. This it ride and die into what? It off a cliff? This ain't no Thelma and no damn Louise. This is real life. And you've got to realize that you are fighting for your damn life out here. And many of you fighting for you and your children's lives. And this is not a joke. It's not a game. Every 19 hours, a black woman in the United States is murdered by a man who, who she was romantically involved with or married to. Just getting a piece of paper doesn't mean that a person is going to straighten up their spine and suddenly become the man that you've always wanted him to be. Wishing and praying for somebody to change is not going to make them into the man that they want, that, that you need them to be. If you see that there is a mismatch and there are far too many of us women, like, you know, it's like we see all these couple dancing videos and they're dancing and they're just, oh, this, that, and we think that everything is all right behind the scenes because you see a few seconds in front of the camera or we see some people eating ice cream together and they both look good and the sun is shining off their sun-kissed faces and they're like, relationship goes. Or you see somebody who is famous up on TV sitting up. Listen, I was at the Black Love Conference where Niecy Nash was sitting up there with her husband and they were talking about how they had gotten into their relationship and everything and all the, the, the soulmate and the kismet and all of this. Two years later, they were divorced. It's like they were sitting up on a panel instructing people on how they did it. Two years later, they were divorced. What else is going on behind the scenes? I have heard it. I have seen it myself that there are people who are like this. Look, this man says that he's married and he is abusing, verbally abusing her. Now, look, I don't know what he is saying is going on in that relationship because at the end he was like, do this because if you are unfortunate enough to marry a woman who is doing this to you, <clears throat> as leader of, as head of household, it is up to you to shift. You, you man, right? Leader, head of household. You got a woman inside of your house who is not treating you in a way that you as king provider, head of household, know that you deserve to be treated. And you meet that with then descending into the drudgeons of just disgusting despair and dereliction. And you start calling her out of her name and doing this in front of the children, lambasting her in front of your sons and your daughters. So you as king, head of household, rather than being leader and saying, you know what? No, no go so. I'm out of here. We're going to stop this right now. I did a video already when I used to do my man day videos. If there's a woman who's talking all slick to you, just stop her at the, at the inception of it and say, let's not, let's not, let's not foster disrespect between us. Let's not. And you as the man, you set the tone 
So he is now teaching his children. And these are the leaders who are leading us or leading some of us where. And it is up to you as a womb man, as womb holder with this magical vibrating organ inside of your body. With all of the power and wisdom that exists inside of women, that you would sit there and be abused and be underneath the guidance and the tutelage of a broken, lost man, a conquered, debilitated, impotent male. And it is up to you as womb holder to have the wisdom to be like, no, listen, submission is a gift. It takes a tremendous amount of strength to submit, but you have to choose wisely. Don't just go and give your submission to anybody. And there are far too many of us out there who are not qualifying and vetting our mates. Listen, spend the time, invest the time in getting to know who it is that you're with so that you don't end up in a situation with some man who think that he's leading you somewhere. Imagine the woman in that situation who is getting spoken to that way. Imagine some of us out there behind the scenes who are getting spoken to in, in a type of way. What does that do to our spirit? What does that do? And listen, we didn't incarnate for that. With all of the power that we come into this life with as goddess, we didn't incarnate to be underneath the rule of some lesser than being trying to beat us further down. I had a friend years ago and listen, those of you who know me know that I've been an entrepreneur since I was 13 years old. Tanya knows how to make money. I know how to bring that money in. Money flows to me. For those of you who have not gotten my book, it is sold out worldwide, but it will be available soon. This is the book of affirmation, self-love. This book helps you attract more money, helps you attract higher vibrating love. This book rewrites your subconscious programming because the lives that we are living is a result of what it is that we feel we deserve subconsciously. We attract all of these things to us because subconsciously we feel that that is where we deserve to be. A book like that shifts it. But nonetheless, I was with a friend years ago and my friend was always having financial problems and financial worries. And what I ended up doing was I couldn't really talk about my abundance because when you start talking about some of these numbers out there that people are pulling in, when you start talking about becoming wealthy, when you become wealthy, there's a lot of money that you pull in each month. There's a lot of money that you pull in each day and everybody may not be able to understand because if you think about it, in order to make 300,000, 300, if you wanna make $365,000 a year, you need to make $1,000 a day. For some people, they can't compute that. So I was with this friend and my and and what I ended up doing was I couldn't really talk about the type of money I was making. I couldn't really talk about the type of moves that I was making. And being in that environment began to constrict me. And it's like sometimes you have to have very honest, open conversations with your friends. And I said to my friend, I said, "Listen, why is it that in this situation that the temptation is?" for me to make myself smaller to meet you where it is that you are. Rather than you expanding yourself, stepping into your own abundance and rising yourself up to where I am. Why do I need to become smaller? Because he would be like, he would make little snide comments. He'd be like, oh, that's that good for somebody like you because you so you you got this you you that you this you that you got or, or but listen and listen this was a, a a caucasoid male who was born with every privilege afforded to him being in the the right gender being in the right race and even being born blonde but then when it, a black woman like me from the bronx who decided to become an entrepreneur at 13 and continued that flex he would look at me and be like, oh, that's easy for something. No, no. So then I ask and I implore all of you who are in these lesser than relationships, why is it that you need to make yourself smaller to be comfortable for somebody else's height rather than you just get as large as you need to be and allow them, set the tone to allow them to do what it, the hell it is that they need to do to rise up. Don't constrict yourself. 
So on that note, I'm going to read some of your comments and then we're going to get out of here. So listen, we are live. And if you want to participate in these live videos, you got to come over to the YouTube page because that's the only place that I do the live videos and pull your live comments from. So if you see these comments, you know that these are from the from the live broadcast. Princess Lolita saying, Nisi, right? Nisi looks happy. I'm all for black women finding love and happiness in relationships. And I don't care about the sexual preference. Wait a minute. Nisi done gone over to the other side? Wait a damn minute. I did not know this. <laughs> Black Women Sisterhood is saying, amen, Tanya. Thank you for doing this video today. You're welcome. Alexis is saying, trust me, studs can be just as toxic. Take on a lot of the bad habits learned from men. Yes. Oh, yes. Don't get it twisted because there are a lot of people out there who don't understand what true what, what what true elevated masculine looks like. And so they go into the toxic masculine and when they want to mimic men, they mimic the toxicity. I've heard many a studs saying many a dysfunctional things, even worse than, than, cause they got something to prove. Some of them got something to prove, even worse than some of the men out there, you hear them talking. Martine is saying, are you aware people are using your picture to send friend requests to people and also talking about you are giving away, listen, if you see, listen, I am famous and there are people out there who are trying to ride the coattails. If you see a profile that's fishy, listen, my my page on YouTube is verified. My page on Facebook is verified. If you see an unverified Facebook or YouTube page trying to scam, flag the page. It's as simple as that because I cannot, I can't be every place at, at, at every time. I'm going to need your help, the TKO army. I'm going to need you all to be out there just flagging these pages for impersonation because there are people who are actually signing up. I, I saw one of the pages and people are signing up. They're like, I sent my email, Tanya. And I'm like, what about this page makes you think that this is me? You, you see no verified mark. Come on. <clears throat> K, K is saying over and over again, healing is important. No, it's about loving yourself and black people never love. She's got to get a provider, not being a pick me. Listen, listen. Wait, E Pluribus is saying you didn't know Nisi married a woman? No, I did not know this. Wait, she's married to a woman now? My, 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 I tell you, this was two years ago. I was at that Black Love Conference. What a difference two years makes. I did not know this. I don't, listen, I don't keep up with Nisi like that. But I did not know this. Oh, my goodness. Lavender is saying BM want BW to make enough money to be independent, but not too much money to be fully comfortable and have options. Now, it depends on what type of black man you're talking about. We got to shift away from them nakers. Shift away from them, them nakers. <laughs> and just yelling in and saying, ew, I don't, I don't do dust mites. Hand me the pledge, baby. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Listen. Ooh, Lavender is saying she keeps marrying down, though. I don't know because this is the first I'm hearing of it. But if you're a millionaire, you know, it's like, wh what are your options? If you're a black female millionaire, how many of your options are also going to be millionaires? And do you have access to people from other countries? This is why I'm starting my matchmaking service. Like I said, I got you. We are working on creating solutions. So yes. <clears throat> so there's somebody in here. Chow is saying... We do not know Nisi though. As someone who is going through her night of the soul, she may have worked on herself. Who knows? Yeah, none of us know Nisi. Maybe she did work on herself. Fire Coral is saying, at this point, it's the critical mass of black men with this mentality, whether covert or like this clown. And if the BW could look past the color of these male skin, she would run far away. Listen, I don't know what the percentage is. You're saying it's the critical mass. I don't know. I know that there are good black men out there. I know that there are good black men who get passed over. I know that there are good black men who are shy, who are awkward, who are nerdy, who are a lot of different things. And so I know that they're out there. 
I, I haven't taken a, a study to do the percentage. There's a lot, there's a lot of toxic masculinity out there. However, what is it that we do? You pull yourself back, you you sharpen your own energy, you vibrate higher and vibrate outward, and you attract what is right for you. And you never know. Listen, you could be, you could, there, there are people who meet their spouse at the airport while traveling, meeting per chance. There are people who meet their spouse, he came in 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 the in the medic truck or you know when their mom was having some whatever they they meet them in different random ways you pull forward that which is for you and so if you're pulling forward a certain caliber you're going to have to look within yourself to realize why am i pulling forth this caliber of male what is it about me that needs to be retuned? Because I have a lot of women who come out and they say that the bulk of the issue lay in the hands of men. But just like there is sun, there's also moon. The sun rises and, and then the sun sets and the moon comes up and there's a cycle. So where you have this side of the coin, there's also another side of the coin. What is that other side of the coin? And we cannot absolve our own self of all responsibility and culpability. Yes, men are supposed to be the leaders, etc. However, if they're not leading, what is it that you do? Do you just follow a non-leader off the cliff? No, you don't. You do what it is that you need to do for yourself. All right. So on that note, I'm going to read a few more comments and then we're going to get out of here. I want to know what it is that you think about, about this about this particular video with this man who is teaching how to keep a black woman in her place. And DR is saying, no man is interested in me. I guess I'm a too ugly. Get my book of affirmation, self-love. I'm not going to pander to you. If this is how you feel, that's the truth then. That is your truth. And you will make that truth become true in your life. So Listen, if no man is interested in you, there's something going on, either in your energy, your presentation, where it is that you're going or not going, what it is that you're doing, because no man, not even a hobosexual like the one we saw on yesterday's broadcast, who looked like he smelled like Newport's black and miles and the and the and the air that cooked that conglomerates inside of a man's hot boxes. That's what he looked like. And even him, no, 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 honey, you got to do something different. Something different. So we see Mrs. J was on that broadcast that kept us all up late last night with 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 Pinky and Kendall St. Charles, the purple pill last night. Yes, we were all up late. And then beautiful brown baby doll had a broadcast after that. I am toast this morning. I'm toast. You see, I don't even have on my regular uniform. I am so tired. But it's all right. And we're going to be on WKTLA today, too. So look for that broadcast. All right. Femme Fatale is saying a lot of men don't admit, even when they are geeky or nerdy, et cetera, they also want the fly popular chicks. And just because a man is not picked when in high school does not make him a good man by default. Yes, this is a this is this is a true statement. It's a true statement. Not every man who is geeky or nerdy is a good man. Why are we concentrating on who is not right? Let's, the, what I said is a true statement and you've come forward with your affirmation. What about really just concentrating on where it is that we want to go? You know, I remember, I remember when I was first learning, because you all know that I own an RV. And when I was first learning to, to, to drive the RV and navigate how to turn and how to back up, this thing, you want to talk about skills, parallel parking, an RV hitched up to a truck, that, that's some skills right there. But one of the things that I learned is look in the direction that you want to go. Because while you look in that direction, the, the truck, everything begins to veer in the direction that you look in. So my dear, which direction are we looking in? Are we looking in the direction of these fake um, misogynistic MGTOW guys, incels who are talking about how they were rejected before and they want that fly cutie, the Instagram model, but they're not doing what it is that they need to do? Or are we talking about the men who 
are accomplished, established, who have done the work on themselves, who are making money. These are the men that I bring into my matchmaking service. I've interviewed many of them and they are there and available. However, where's our focus? If we spend our time with our eyes filled with the foolishness that we don't want to see. So listen, veer your eyes in the direction of where it is that you want to go and you let that whole trailer, your whole life move along with you, dear. Everything begins to shift. Start looking where it is that you want to go. And I think that that's a good place to end our broadcast. All right. Well, thank you all for coming out. I appreciate that. After I give the closing, I'll look at some of your comments and say goodbye to some of you. So listen, thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. Make sure you get the book. Make sure you're on my mailing list to find out other ways that I'm working on helping us get into that full abundant self-love. Make sure that you're on my personal mailing list. YouTube was down this morning and I thought I lost my page. And I was like, oh, well, I, I knew that it was coming. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, because you know, it's happened to other content creators. And I've been talking a lot of stuff lately. If YouTube takes my page, do you know how to get in touch with me? Those who are smart have been listening for many months now and they know how to get in touch with me if worse comes to worst on any of these platforms because I don't like WMs in between me and my, my people. So get on my mailing list, tanyatko.com, click on subscribe, make sure that you're on the mailing list. There are about 3,500 people on my mailing list. I got 160,000 on this page, 600,000 on the Facebook page, but 3,000 have come over to my website and know how to get in touch with me when, if need be. Other people, they see my face, they may not even really know my name. I'm Tanya TKO and I'm a self-love specialist from tanyatko.com. I hope you learn how to love yourselves and one another. So on this channel, listen, go out there and love one another, but most importantly, love yourself. And part of loving yourself is knowing when you're not equally matched, knowing what it is that you deserve, knowing what, when somebody is presenting a lie before you. When I do my seminars, we stand up and I let the person in the front say the things that they have heard. And I have the people in the audience scream out, that's a lie. Mm, and it's so powerful, so powerful. Make sure that you're on my mailing list so that you can know when I'm doing another seminar or webinar, all right? So on that note, Tanya TKO, and I'm out, peace. All right, so the, that's the end of the broadcast. I'm gonna chop this up, edit this part out and come back. I heard somebody say that they can't take the pink pill. What is the matter? I, I heard people on last night's broadcast who were saying that they didn't like the page and I don't understand. It's so I'm confused because there's so many different platforms of black women who are doing what it is that that is in their spirit and in their wheelhouse to help. And I, I'm I'm confused by the contention. You know, it's like if there's a, if there's something that's not for you, go someplace where you can find your tribe. You know, like when like when we do my woman in the wild, my woman in the wild retreat. You know, we got warrior women to come out there. But what is the matter that we're not finding our own tribe? That's the thing that's confusing to me. You know. So what's happening here? Lynn Lynn is saying, I feel like a black YT would get ratchet very quickly. Speaking of which, if there's anybody out there who has a clubhouse um, invite for me for Android, come over to my website, click on contact and send it to me because I don't know how to get on and I should be able, I should know how to get on and other people are building platforms on there and I'm not on there yet and I need to be, I feel like. And so KK is saying, I like brown girl, but I won't be going to either camp to fake and obsess with whiteness. No, thanks. Okay. Nikki Red is saying, I love the book. It helps me every day. All right. All right. So we're talking about some of the stuff we were talking about. <clears throat> Oh goodness, people with low, low feeling about black men. Mm -mm -mm. 
And Jamie is saying, I'm a black male and I don't see anything wrong. I don't see anything wrong with the pink pill except for her interracial promotion. She is elevating black women too. Well, you know what, um, dear, I'll say this. There are 2 million less, go to the census. People ask me where I get this stat from. I looked it up on census.gov. There are 2 million less black men than there are black women. So every black man is not going to get, every black woman is not going to get a black man in this country. And of the 2 million deficit, how many of those black men are just ineligible for different reasons, either not a good match or not interested in women, not interested in black women. Um, incarcerated, just not in a, a similar space. So black women are going to have to do different things to to find the mate that they that they that's going to be there for them and love them. So rather than policing who black women be with, just say, you know what, I trust that you're going to make the right decision for you, you know, and and just allow women to get where it is that they need to be. You know what I mean? All right. And Sunkiss is saying, I love that you promote other channels. Yeah, you know, when you find a good thing, you share it. Okay. All right. So somebody is saying, So somebody is saying that the pink pill just isn't for her. She has nothing against her. She's a sweet lady. I feel you. I, cause I was, cause I was confused last night. Cause there were like, there was contention on the broadcast. And I was like, this is weird. Like, why are you on a channel that you don't really like? And Goldie is saying that scram, that scream out, that's a lie piece almost brought me to tears. Thank you. Yeah. You know what? Come to one of my, my, my seminars when I do them, they're very powerful in person. And I realized today that I need to do more. Um, however, we have to see how to do that in the, in, in the age of COVID. But maybe we can do something on Zoom and have a day where we're together and do our thing. So yeah, maybe that, maybe that, maybe that. All right, all right, everybody. All right. How do I get, how do you get my book in Ghana? You know what, Princess, I'm glad that you're on because I'm a little confused. Um, Amazon for Africa, where, where's the hub? Is the hub in, um, in, I believe it's Morocco. When you order from Amazon, where is it shipped from? Because I need to get my books to the hub, but I'm not which sure which hub services West Africa. So if you could help me, I'll stay on until you give the answer to that because I want to hear. And so, um, yeah. And so play your own game is saying, why sh travel? Why should black women have to travel just to look for someone of the same phenotype? What sense does that make? Hey, look, you know, I, 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 I support women doing what they feel that they need to do. You know, some women will travel, some will get do online dating, some will hire a matchmaker. There's more than one way. Listen, listen. <laughs> Four times three is 12, six times two is 12, one times 12 is 12. There's more than one way to get to your solution. So let's, let's continue to just find a solution that's right for us. All right. So I'm waiting for the young lady from Ghana to respond back because I need to know where that hub is so I can get the books to the hub. Because if you want to get the books in Ghana, I got to get the books to the hub. Hmm. All right. Jamie is saying black women should be traveling anyway. I think the future is matchmaking. Like Tanya TKO is planning, absolutely. All right. And Royal is saying, y'all not listening. There aren't many options to be open for it. Your person may not be here in America. And that's the thing, you know, maybe your person is not here in America. You know what I'm saying? Oh, where's the girl from Ghana? Why she's not coming back? I 
And Crystal is saying Tanya isn't going to match up 2 million black women. Black women will be dating outside of the race. Get used to it. Why are you so, you all getting confrontational out here? <laughs> Butterfly is saying, I think traveling just opens up your mind. You don't travel to find a BM. You travel to expand your circle and see different things. I know that's right. Mm -mm -mm. She left? Well, if there's somebody else who knows the answer. Oh, wow. Be beautiful me. There, I know I have, one of my subscribers is in Tanzania right now. And player own is saying, I'm pro traveling just because some, wait, I'm pro travel, but I'm not traveling just because some people have a specific idea of who I should be with. If you can't stomach who my partner is, don't look. Yeah, well, look, like I said, people got to do what they feel is right for them. You know, if there is, if there's anybody who knows where the hub is in, um, D DR Wyatt is saying, I don't think my person is here on this planet still waiting on the aliens to come, child. Listen, and Simone wants to go to Botswana, go. So it, it really, I want to know where the hub is for West Africa. I'd also like to know where the hub is for South Africa. Because when I was looking, there was an Amazon warehouse in Morocco. But I'm like, is Morocco servicing West Africa? Are they servicing South Africa as well? All right, so listen, on that note, I'm going to get out of here. I will see you all in the next video. Thank you all for coming out, and I will see you all. Make sure your notifications are on, and make sure that you're on my personal mailing list. Simple as that. Peace.